Welcome to another session from LearnReason.com. My name is Matt. This video is sponsored by HDRefills.com. Hear and feel the difference. Go check them out. You'll be glad you did. In this session, we're going to talk about the Note Echo, one of the new players in Reason 9. And right off the bat, it is a player. And what that means is it has to be attached to an instrument. It doesn't make any sound on its own. What it does is it plays instruments. So you have to have it attached. If you tab around here, you can't hook anything into it or do anything. It's just, it just plays the instrument. And what you can do here is you press one key. And it's gonna, it's gonna play the note and repeat it four times. This is the number of, of repeats. This represents your key press. If you, if you on, uh, click this, you're only going to hear four instead of five. You're not going to hear your key press. And you'll see as I'm pressing it, if I hold it in, the note length is going to be, it's going to play the whole note length that you have here, which is a uh, uh, 3 sixteenths note length, or step length. If you just click, if you just press it, I did that on my keyboard controller. See how, I, if I just press it here, that's like a fast hit, and it's just, it's repeating how hard you hit the key. You know, it's velocity sensitive and speed sensitive. Now on my keyboard, I will press very lightly. So that's important to understand. It's all velocity is sensitive and it is polyphonic. Okay, so you can set your note length here. If you if you um, have it set to zero, this is what it's going to be. If you go up a couple notches, you can actually create some kind. It's almost like a chorus effect. Wait, that's too much. Just really slightly. It's, it's almost chorusy in a way. And then you can get long note lengths. And that's what your step lengths can do. It's, it's, it's really dead easy to use. And here's your repeats. And you can have a total of uh, 16 repeats with one note hit. Here you're just going to have 16 repeats. Okay. And what's cool here is with your pitch, you can pitch it up. And what this pitch does, you can have 12, you can go up 12 semitones. And basically what that, that means is it's going to be 12 notes. Think of it as 12 notes on the keyboard. So if I notch this down so that, see, Let's do this with a less, uh, let's just do four here. You'll see that the semitones go up, right? If you use very high or very low pitch values, you know, very high or very low pitch values, together with many repeats, the note range of the associated uh, instrument, you know, this instrument, for instance, it's the ID8, might be exceeded. And if this happens, what, uh, what's going to happen is um, you're, you're going to get silent notes. So let me give you uh, um, an example of that. And we'll, uh, uh, we'll just bring this down. And we hit one note. And we hit one note. Now let's up the repeats. 
let's keep going. Pretty soon it's going to reach its max. Let's keep going. Let's see what happens. See the last two, it didn't make any. No it didn't. It 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 met its uh, max right there. Bring it down one two. That's its max. If we bring it up one more, I believe it's maxed out. So that's something to be cognizant of. So what we can do here, though, is really cool. So if we just get it so it's, you're not maxing anything out, you should be OK. And you can do this with chords. And of course, you can have the velocity go up, too. And with going up, we can reverse it and go down, like this. Uh, come on here. Just have it go down. And that's, you can do that with this, which is so cool. OK, so let me show you. One other cool thing about this thing is that you can make, you can develop really cool chord progressions. So let's, uh, let's uh, reset the patch right here. This is your, your, your default patch. OK, so what I can do is set this to, say, 1-8 uh, and take this note out and I get this. And now what we can do is time it when we're playing it. So we get this. See it's it's all it's I'm playing the notes on my keyboard and it's velocity sensitive and everything. So I'm playing it, but it instead of me having to do this which I, you know, I'm a human being, I cannot do it rigid and perfect every single time. I just use note echo to develop my chord progression. Isn't that cool? So note echo, you can do all kinds of cool things with, with it with one note. You can do it with many notes. And you can create really cool chord progressions, really cool sound effects right in this, this cool player. Now, a, another cool thing here is this. For drums, uh, what we can do is, um, Let's put in, yeah, we have the snare thing here. We can have like snares in, in uh, your, your music. Now we could, uh, we, could, we could up it and just have it go up in uh, uh, velocity. So you know, you know when you have uh, breaks in in dance music, or whatever, and you, instead of going into the sequencer to do this, just come in here and do it. It's really simple. Uh, I'm really digging this. Okay, one more thing I'll show you, and it's like I showed you in the scales and chords. You can record direct, or you can you can send the track. So 
So if I record with direct, this is what happens. And if we go in here, we can see that it, these are the exact notes that I was, um, I was playing on the, my keyboard controller. Now, say I, I like that, but actually what I want is what, what uh, the, the note echo is doing so I can, I can copy those notes to other instruments. All I have to do is say send a track. And it's going to put it right down here. And what I have here is see all the separate hits. See all the separate hits? And now I can take those, this MIDI data and copy it to other tracks, which is cool. Okay. And you can also direct record, which will record what the note echo is playing, you know, how it interprets, you know, what you put in. And it will be recorded right into the sequencer. Click in there. See, it's got all the separate little hits there. So those are the three different ways you can record the uh, note echo. And it's the same way in all the different players, but I thought I would show you that. So that is the, the, the note echo. And it's, it's, it's really pretty cool. One last thing I want to show you guys with the note echo is, is, you know, we're using the keyboard and we have our little chord progression going, right? You know, we have that going. But, you know, I'm playing that on the keyboard. There's one more thing, one more option that I have that I can use, and it's the scales and chords player. And well, all you have to do is drag it down and put it right underneath the note echo, right? And now I have all of the possible chord possibilities, you know, keys, I mean, scales with the different keys, now I could use with this progression that I have set up in the note echo. Pressing one note, you can see the note I'm pressing right here. And if you don't know how the scales and chords uh, player works. I did a tutorial on it. Uh, I suggest you watch it because this is one heck of an amazing player. And so, I mean, we can go in here and just select any type of scale and you never know what you might come up with. So I just wanted to show you that you can put the scales and chords underneath the note echo and have it, you know, play into the note echo and you'll get the, uh, the note echo chord progressions uh, taking in the scales and chords player. So it's pretty cool. These players are amazing. So I really hope that this helps you guys out and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next session. And the way you guys can help out is to like, share, subscribe, and follow. That helps me out. So you guys take care.